In the quiet town of Waseca, Minnesota, a teenage boy named John David Ledoux was secretly plotting a massacre. He spent months researching bomb-making techniques, acquiring weapons and explosives, and carefully planning his attack. His targets included his high school, the local police station, and a nearby park. But his plans were discovered just in time, thanks to a concerned citizen who reported suspicious activity near a storage unit where Ledoux had been keeping his stash. The shocking case of John David Ledoux gripped the nation, raising questions about the warning signs of school shootings and the need for mental health support for troubled young people. Interrogation Files presents The Confession of John David Ledoux. Oh, today's date is April 29th, 2014. Time now is about 7.49. I'm Officer Schrader with the Wasika Police Department. And I'm right here with John Le Ledoux. Yes. So, um, John had asked to speak with me and come here to the police department and talk with uh, some suspicious activity that's going on. And uh, we've went along with that request and, and here we are. So, what's going on today, John? Hard for me to talk about. Okay, um, I passed by here like half an hour ago. I was carrying with me a type of tar for like roofing cement. It's like some you could use for that. Okay. Motor oil and three O rings, plastic O rings. My intentions with those were to create Molotov cocktails that I would throw and they would stick because I would put tar in them and motor oil and they would cause more damage compared to regular gasoline ones. The o-rings I used were uh, for bump keys I have which I was planning to break and enter into one of my friend's house and steal a shotgun. Um, there are far more things out in that unit than meets the eye. It appears the officers only know at this time that I have just works bombs out there, even though I lack the aluminum foil. What they do not realize out there is that I have smokeless powder and something called flash powder, and I also have some more things out there that can be very deadly. I am the one who is responsible for the CO2 bombs at Harley Elementary School. Even though my intentions never were to hurt anyone, I just wanted to test out the devices. I have created many other similar devices to those and set them off over various periods of time in town, including First Congregational Church. I am the one who is responsible for damaging the windows, just because I wanted to see what they could do. Um, in the unit, there are more things. There are thousands of ball bearings and a pressure cooker. I also have some pipes I was going to use to make pipe bombs. I was planning to make flash powder pipe bombs and fill a pressure cooker up with flash powder and load it with BBs and my intentions were to actually create two of them. In the locker the officers will find 15 pounds of which is an oxidizer and about 9 pounds of They will also find about 1.5 pounds of a smokeless powder type. That is all the um, dangerous chemicals I have in there besides okay. the what's all in there oh, uh, I also have that is not it I have and rust which I use to make thermite which okay. burns at 5,000 degrees Celsius and what were your intentions with these items when you went that you've been doing I have a notebook on the red bed that explains it okay where's uh, where are you living at my current address is Minnesota Wasika. Okay. Can you talk to me about those intentions that are in the notebook? Okay. Sometime before the end of the school year, my plan was to steal a recycling bin from the school and take one of the pressure cookers I made and put in the hallway and blow it up during passing period time. My intentions were then when people were fleeing, I would detonate one when people were fleeing, fleeing, just like the Boston bombings, and blow them up too. Then my plans were to enter and throw Molotov cocktails and pipe bombs and destroy everyone, and then when the SWAT comes, I would destroy myself. 
Okay. So I wasn't too far off when I was talking to you about where I thought things were going back in the in the unit, right? Yep. Are you surprised? No. Hmm. I'm kind of interested in that. You're not surprised at all. No. You thought that at the beginning? I kind of thought so. And that's why I think you wanted to talk with me. Because I sort of had an idea where you were at with things. Is there a reason for this? What, what brought you to this? Um, hmm. Well, first off, I was not bullied at all. I'm, I don't even think I've ever been bullied in my life. Okay. I have good parents. I live in a good town. I think I'm just really mentally ill. And no one's noticed. And I've been trying to hide it. It sounds like you're a really smart kid. Sounds like you haven't had any problems at school. I've talked with the school liaison officer. You're a pretty good kid and everything. I am. Why would you want to do this in, to the, all these people out at, out at the school? Um, I really wanted to... I didn't have plans on living past that day, so... I wanted to... I wanted to, like... I didn't want to prove that I was a wuss, like all the other recent shooters, like Adam Lanz who shot himself. I wanted to like get taken down by the SWAT just to show that I wasn't a wimp and not like willing to fight with equal force. But I really want to get out of this place and uh... Why, why is this place so bad? I don't know. I just don't really care for it. Um, you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I have a sister. She's one year older than me. Okay. She go to school too? Yes. She's a senior? She is. Okay. So you would have done this stuff while she was at school as well? I forgot to mention a detail. Before that day, I was planning to dispose of my family too. Why, why would you dispose of your family? What, what's, what have they done? They did nothing wrong. I just wanted as many victims as possible. These, uh... Bombs that you were letting off at, like at Hartley, the CO2 bombs. Can you tell me about those? I wrote a letter to you guys, and I guess you guys never found it, did you? I put it in someone's mailbox, and I told them to give it to you guys, but they never did. They were CO2 cartridges I filled with <laughs> put a visco fuse in there that burns at 28 seconds every foot. I used a radiator repair to seal it. Basically, when the pressure builds up in the container, it ruptures it and sends the cartridge flying, which acts as shrapnel. Very small, possibly, maybe lethal, very unlikely though, probably just like lose a hand or two. How many of those do you think you let off out at Harley? I went there on, I went there twice. The first time you guys, I threw one and it was the dud, and you guys discovered it. But what you guys don't know is that there were not three of them, there were four. But the thing is, two of them were in the same spot, so you guys just thought that was one. Okay, so like one blew up and it blew up the other one? Three of them? No, what happened was I was standing over by the doors, I lit the fuse, and I whipped it like over towards the path by that goes that leads on the track, and it was a dud. But I didn't want to go over to it and like Have move it, because I figured like you're never supposed to go towards your uh, things that fail. So I didn't go to it. The other one I strapped to a can of WD-40 and attempt to create like a fireball that's blew up, but it did not ignite the WD-40. It just blew up. Then I, w I left and I went back another time and I put two of them inside a doll that I bought, an Elmo doll, which you probably know about, it was an Elmo. Yep. They both went off. 
and you, I put them in the same spot, and you guys thought there was just one. Okay. But there were no other ones, that was it. My intentions there were actually never to create malice or harm or anything. I just wanted to test them out, even though it seemed like an odd spot. I just did it there because it was a wide open area. When, when about did you set those off? First incident was, I believe, maybe, okay, uh, the first, the second time, the time you guys, like, wrote the article out, I believe I set them off, like, May 1st, and you guys discovered them, like, a month later, so you guys were right when you said that, they were old. Hmm. And then you said it said something about the first con congressional church. Yeah. What did what happened there? What happened there was um first time I went there and uh for fun because I wanted to rush, I placed one near the window and I set it off. And I went back a few days later and I was very surprised because there was only like a foot or two away from the window. The window was completely undamaged. Then I wanted to really see what they could do, so I took another one and I taped it to a window, and I lit the fuse and it ran away and it exploded and a big hole was in the window. And something else you guys have not learned about is um, that it's not the only place in town I've done. I've also done it at a park over by my house. I put some in a slide and they've been going off and destroying parts of the slide. So that would be the one by the skate park? Yes, if you notice the orange slide has some holes in the same responsible for that. I haven't. I guess I, I, I'm not aware of that right now. I have a video of it on my channel. On your channel? On my YouTube channel. Oh, okay. I covered up my face now with a bunch of letters because I figured you guys would be looking for me, but... So you have like your own YouTube channel? I do. What's the name of that? I actually have two, but the one I have it on is a fake account, and the name of it is Seymour Asses. With a C. C M O R E. Interesting name. Yeah. Okay. So you've got the ones up at the school, you've got the church. You've got the the slide. A long time ago, in maybe the summer of 2013, I um, in say August maybe. I made two of them, but the ceiling on them was not radiator repair; it was hot glue. So I tried to set them off, but they both failed because the hot glue didn't contain the pressure well enough, and since it's smokeless, it didn't build up fast enough like it would with flash powder or black powder. So I had two failed ones there, but in town, those are the only ones I've done. Oh, and I, I still forgot to say, I threw one at the shoot. I threw like two of them at the shooting range, and they both went off too because I figured people would just mistake those for gunshots. What shooting range? Sportsman's. Okay. Do you have any of these, any other items at, at your house? I do. What do you have at your house? I have three unexploded ones in my room. They are ready to go off with just the light of the match or laying the fuse. And are they, how big of ones are they? Same size as the ones at Harley. Are they the CO2 ones that are in your room? Yep, 12 ounce CO2. These ones are different though. There's three total. One is strapped to a small WD-40 can, but I have pieces of wood to it because the last time I did it, um, they didn't go off because there was no open flame. I figured just the friction and heat alone would set them off, but they didn't. So I taped some pieces of wood to the can, and I was going to light those, and then the flame on the, the wood, when I lit the fuse and it went off, uh, the, the liquid, the WD-40 would get scattered everywhere and catch the flame and create a big fireball. And the other two I have, I have nails taped around them. I just wanted to see what that could do to like a wooden box. I was gonna make a wooden box and put them in there just to see what it would do. Well, it sounds like, John, that you're a very intelligent kid and you put a lot of time and effort into this stuff. 
you know, understanding what what goes into them all and and uh, the differences and the powders and the and the makeup of them. So you have you have this all. There's a diary in your room then, under your bed. Yep. I started about a year ago. That's when I started thinking about this. Now you've definitely thought about it. You've put some definitely put some homework in. Yes, I have. What? When we get all this figured out, John, what is what is it that we can do to help you? I want to be able to help you out since you're being honest and that this didn't work out. I want to be able to help you understand and and make things better for you. Okay, um, first I'd like a check from like a psychiatrist or something. Okay, have you ever seen a psychiatrist before? Nope. No one knows what I think. Is it, does anyone know that you, you've, minus your YouTube page possibly, that, that you've set these bombs off? Yes. Who would know? Some of my friends. Like who? Um... I was with only three of my friends now. One of my friends who I was with a long time ago, I, his name was, um, and, uh, I set them off with him, the failed ones, because we just wanted to make some fireworks in the summer. At the time, I, uh, was still having homicidal thoughts, so, um, but he didn't know about that. Um, I got mad at him a while ago, and I decided to drop him as a partner. So I went alone for a while, and I decided to start up again. And I chose one of my friends named Austin to help me out. No, no. Um, this person I'm referring to has no um, police record or anything. He's okay. He was with me, and he was with me on the day that we set the ones off at Hartley, both times. Um, I've been with him when I set the other ones off. I'm the one who's actually set them off, though he is not. So he was just with me. He okay. did not make them or blow them up or anything, so he was just a witness to it. Okay. His last name? His last name is... Uh... Yeah. Okay. The third time I was with, um, at the shooting range, I was with a friend of mine named who I got in trouble with a lot with one more time in the past because I was out after curfew. And I believe the summer of, um, I think this was like in July, maybe. July of last year, maybe? Yeah, July of last year. Yep. Did you get a curfew ticket? Or did you guys get a ride home back to, like, Ed's or something? It was just me. I uh, mean, I had um, a K-Bar, but it was just because we were playing a game where we'd stand at, like, shoulder length apart from each other like this. And we'd, like, throw it in the ground, and we had to stick our leg to where the knife went. And the other person grabbed it, and they had to throw it in the ground, stick it to the leg where the knife went. And the point was to get it so you can't stretch your legs anymore, like, to where you threw the knife to win. That's the reason I had that knife on me, but they acted like I was... Uh, threat at the time, and um, I was wearing a duster jacket. I was in black, and they saw me, and I was on probation. I complete my probation, and ever since then, I've never had any problems with the law. What were you on probation for? Uh, being out after curfew and had. Oh, I also forgot to mention I had firecrackers on me that I got from Wisconsin. I brought back. Did you get stopped when you got your like curfew and fireworks deal? Was that like behind the old CIS? Yeah. Wait. What do you mean? 
What do you mean, the old CIS? Like on East Elm and like on the back side of it, like maybe 3rd Avenue. I'm not like a block up from CIS. No, it was over by like the quick trip kind of area, like by the road tracks where okay. if we were to keep going that way, I was on the road tracks. I have um, other illegal things I've done. I've stolen quite a bit. Um, Did you purchase these, a lot of these items that you blow up or do you steal them? I have not stolen any things I've blown up. Like the stuff you bought from Charlie's? Is that, did you purchase that? Mm -hmm. I have never stolen any of the materials I was planning to use before the school year ended to my school. The reason was I didn't want to get caught and risk people like finding out about it. Um, but now it's kind of irrelevant because I'm fucked. Not necessarily. Could have been a lot worse. It could have. Mm-hmm. Oh. Now you have the chance to change. We have the chance to help you. You said you wanted to see a psychiatrist. We can help you with that. Maybe things get better. By by now, you you, you didn't didn't uh, you're not dead. Mm -hmm. Your family's not dead. No one at the school is dead. Right. So right. It, it could be worse. I was um, planning on disposing of my friends recently. I was going to purchase some potassium cyanide and slip it in his drink because he annoyed me a while ago when I wanted revenge. Where would you get that? The deep web. Which friend, friend was that? Well, okay, okay, not a friend, like, uh, close, so, guy, more of a friend of a friend. Okay. Um, he'd been partying a lot, and he hadn't, like, it wasn't like he was my main enemy or anything, I just didn't like him, and I didn't want to see him anymore. And I was reading up on, um, potassium cyanide, and it's very soluble in water, I mean, and, uh, just water and everything else. So I was going to order some and put it in this drink and take him out with that. Or I could have accidentally spilled out his shirt and it would have went into his skin and taken him out that way. And who was that? There were a few people. What are their names that you, would have, you were thinking of doing that to? to take care of him. Can you, can you tell me how you got the key to the the storage unit or how that how that came about? I told Ed's mom that I wanted a unit um, because prior to this I'd been storing all my stuff underneath my bed and I wanted to get it out of there because I didn't want my parents to find out. So I asked, I asked um, my sister for a while to give me one because she's 18 and she was being too slow. So I asked my parents, I mean, not my parents, I'm sorry, I asked, his, I asked him if he could have like one of his friends do it. But he said his mom volunteered, so she did it in like a day and she gave me the key. I put all my stuff in there. And I was planning on keeping all my stuff there and on the day I would go back there and get it all and go to school.
When was this day coming? Um, I originally wanted to be like April 19th, but then I decided to, decided to skip it. I wanted, um, I wanted to be in April because April's my favorite month because that's the year. I mean, that's a month that all like the really bad tragedies happen. Like, um, Columbine, Titanic, Columbine, Oklahoma City bombing, Boston bombing. It's just like Kelly Joel Larson. Oh, I uh, didn't know that. But uh, yeah, that's the reason. So all because of they were all in the other ones in April. April's like my favorite month. I feel that was a good time. It's getting warm out, even though this April it's April thirtieth right now and it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> um. If I wanted to do it around April, but I decided not to do it April 19th because I think, wait, no. April 19th would have worked because that's, that was a Saturday. I think April 14th was it because um, I figured I didn't want to do it April 18th because I figured that after, because 420 was coming up, people were thinking of, because um, last year people probably brought marijuana to school because 420 was coming up, and I figured maybe they have some dogs there and find the stuff I had planned in the hallway and call it off score down there and I didn't get anyone. But that's not the case now because now it's May and I was just wanting to get it done before school was up. Well, what do we have? May 1st is Thursday? Yep. So were you, were you gonna try to get everything done tonight? Do it tomorrow? Still be in no, April? I still had a cooker to buy. Okay. I had to steal a shotgun too. I had two weapons I was gonna use. I was gonna use an SKS, which is a rifle that fires a 7.62 by 39 millimeter cartridge that is with the same round the AK-47 fires, and a 12 gauge shotgun. And the stuff you saw, I had much more of it. It was double lot buck because I heard that was most effective in taking out people with. I was going to saw it off, by the way. I was going to use a saw off shotgun. Where were you going to get these guns? One I already have. The other I was going to steal. So you already have the SKS? Yes, it's in my room. It's in your room? How many rounds of magazines and stuff do you have? I have a magazine for the SKS, but I don't like it. I use clips for it, the little metal piece that I push down the bottom. Each one holds 10 rounds. I have a, bullet, uh, a bandolier that I was going to load them up with boats. I was hoping they'd like maybe. Where's the SKS at in your room? It's like, it's on my bed. How many round, How many of those 10 round clips do you have for it? Oh God, I ordered, um, I have 46, but there's a reason I have 46. You know I, that's a huge amount, that's 460 rounds. That'd be heavy as hell. But um, the reason I had 40 is because I had only six, and I figured if I put 10 in there and they reloaded, that's 70 rounds. That's probably not too much, assuming if you guys would come in like average police time for that kind of situation. It's maybe like eight to 10 minutes, maybe, for the main people to get there. So- What do you mean the main people? Um, Police and body armor, SWAT. So I wanted like, I wanted a fair amount of ammo, but I didn't want to be like, um, having like, thousands on me. So I just wanted like, maybe like, 150 around there. And 70 I thought was a bit low, so I bought 20 clips and they didn't fit down the bolt because they were too wide. And they had feeding problems going in there. So I bought another 20 and they had the same problem, so I was starting to drill them to make them smaller and fit in there. So I could carry those on me. Did you go to the range and test them out quite a bit, or what? Test what out? The SKS to I've know that... There, it, I've been there many times with the SKS. That, that you'd find that you had a feeding problem? Oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm sorry, not a feeding problem like they would feed up properly. It was the problem pushing the rounds down into the actual internal magazine. Okay. And um, I wasn't... I could have gotten my firearms illegally off the deep road. I could have bought... 
an AK-47, I could have bought an M16, I could have bought a Tech 9, I could have bought an MP5, I could have bought... Hell, I saw an ad for M uh, C4 and an M60 if I wanted those, which I could have gotten. But I didn't because I wanted to prove kind of a point. I don't know why. I kind of wanted to show that in, um, like, all the... All the recent massacres, they've had like uh, AR-15s and AK-47, stuff like that. I wanted to use something that was not uh, like high capacity or had a pistol grip or anything else. Just like a regular rifle to kind of just show that they could get the job done too and are sometimes even better. Especially the 12 gauge I was going to make. It was a sawn-off. I was going to make a sawn-off and had a pistol grip on it and have it fire a double lot buck. Hmm. Where were you gonna get the shotgun from? My plan was, um, one of my friends, he has one, and I was going to go to his house one day and bump his lock on his front door and go in and take it in a guitar case and walk home and then saw it off. What friend's house was that, that other shotgun? His name is, um, Corey. He's never had any problems with the law either, to my knowledge. All of this is de all of this stuff. What do y'all got detailed in your notebook? Um, my plans very detailed. Uh, like I was just being vague. I put out like step by step of everything. I don't have like blueprints of the hallways or anything like that. But I have like my plans and thoughts and changes to my plans over like months. My original plan was um, very different. My original plan was um to actually set in pressure cooker bombs, but I was going to have eight pipe bombs with it, and I was going to use Bondo or a type of auto body filler to fill them, and I was going to put those in the cafeteria, but I figured after um, Columbine and they put propane bombs in the cafeteria, people would have gotten a bit wary of someone leaving boxes in there, so I decided my next best place to find like a large group of people was right after the lunch bell rings, I was going to place a box right by, like, the water fountain. And as the bell rings, people are passing it down, I have a remote detonator, um, and I was going to hit the button, and it was going to light the fuse and ignite the flash powder, and it has, I was um, planning to have that go off and send the shrapnel everywhere. But then I changed my plan up quite a bit. It first was to put it in the cafeteria and have the six pipe bombs with it, even though I don't know if they would even worked, because they were with the pressure bomb, I don't even know if they would set the other ones off. But then I changed it to not making those, and instead strapping eight cans of WD-40 around the cooker, and maybe in hope, try to like make deadly as in um, life threatening by shrapnel, and maybe set the building on fire. Even though we have a sprinkler system. But it's a lot of brick out there. Yeah, the ceilings were fine, although. Yeah. Where do you what do you do that you you get your money for these items? I have a job. Where do you work? I work at Hy-Vee. Okay. You're like a checker or a stock boy or what? I'm a checker and I work in frozen and dairy. Okay. How long have you worked there? Since like this maybe six months, seven months late August. That was my main source of income unless I was taking money from my dad's wallet or my mom's. Or um, we had a bunch of silver that I bought up and I had one of my, um, I had one of Ed's friends go down to Pond America, pawn that for like 500 bucks so I could use that for materials. And that's where I get my money from. So you've been stealing stuff from mom and dad, stole some silver? Yep. Like silver, silver... Uh, oh, I didn't steal silver. the silver. I had the silver originally, and then I wanted oh, okay. to trade it in. It was like silver coins or...? Silver bars. Okay. And where did you get those? When I was in fourth grade, there was a guy uh, in my grade named Zach Kruger, and you probably already know what happened to him, so I don't have to explain too much. 
and they had this charity in my school called Coins for Cougar. And at the time, I really cared about people, and I'd cry. I don't even know why. And I donated like two hundred dollars of my um, uh, money in there, and my sister donated like a hundred. And the total result was like um, for the whole school was like thirteen hundred total built up from. And that was like a third of it, not a third, maybe like a fifth, maybe like a fifth of it was towards from me and Barry. And um, after that, my dad was happy with us, so in return for me donating all that money, he bought silver bars to make up for it. And when the price rose, the um, value of the silver rose, and I decided to get that cashed in for materials. And Valerie got some silver bars too, but I took hers and exchanged it for my own money. And she has no idea that I did that. Well, it sounds like you know what that you you know what the good is on on things. I mean, you did something good there, John. You, you donated you know money out of your own pocket for the coins for Kruger, right? I Gave know. a couple hard bucks. I wouldn't know. I did back then. Okay, that that I had to have been good, right? Yeah, I guess that's. Well, I guess that's fine. So where where along the lines here did where did you start thinking about this stuff? How long ago? My first entry in my journal was written what's the seventh month of the year? July. It was written on July, I believe, fourteenth. It was staying in my uncle's house and I there was no real cause for it. I wasn't like traumatized by an event or put in lockers or anything like that. I've never been bullied ever. Like I cannot think of one time in my like history of my life I've ever been bullied. Not once. I guess those stupid bullying posters do work after all. But uh I just Did you go to that Phil Chalmers thing? Yeah, yeah, I was about there. a year ago or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. What did you think of that? Um, that did that help or make things worse for the, like your thoughts? A lot of my friends mocked him, but um, I was surprised at the time because I was really into like um, like murderers and serial killers. I knew all about like um, Richard Ramirez and um, Eric Harris. And he talked in detail about them, so I enjoyed getting to see that. His message I didn't really listen to much of. I understand basically on like a basis it was about like people who play violent video games or listen to violent music have more maybe higher expectancy to this kind of thing. And in this sense, I think he's right about that if it comes down to me. Because, uh,. I haven't played, been playing video games much recently. I used to play video games a lot. I had consoles and NES and Super Nintendo. I was an old school gamer. But now I've been playing um, just very on and off, like Brutal Doom. It's a modification that, I don't know if you know what Doom is, but um, it's a gore modification where things are much more violent. Um, I've been listening to, all my life, I've been listening to like metal, but I know that sounds like such an uncanny coincidence that you probably don't believe me, but like, I don't think that had any... Like heavy, heavy metal? Like, uh, what would you call it? It'd be more along the lines of... This is hard to explain. It's not like... Like more Manson type no, metal? No, not, not at all Marilyn Manson. I'm not a fan of him. Okay. Not like ACDC or Metallica type Yeah, of I like Metallica a lot. Okay. I actually play guitar. I've been playing guitar for about eight years now. Metallica was my favorite band's cover. I've been playing a lot of the songs. Okay. So, I mean, they're not a um, I've been playing means. Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and things harder than them, like um, Death, Obituary. Uh, but nothing. The thing is, when you say metal nowadays, people think of bands like Bullet For My Valentine or 
Asking Alexandria or some crap like that, and I really don't care for them. Okay. And they're far different from um, what metal actually was back then, and that's what I listen to. And it's not at all like this retarded, stupid, fucking emo scene right now. Okay. Uh, I'd go with that. Yeah. Obviously, I, I like Metallica as well, so, um, so I, you know, it isn't some of that other stuff that we would talk about, so. So what else can we do to help you? What are you thinking it is that you need? I just want to find out what's wrong with me, actually. Hell of a smart kid, the way it sounds. Christ, you rattle off stuff and knew more stuff, and obviously you're into some stuff, and you're a very intelligent kid. Mm-hmm. So I... You know, I think you, I think you have an idea of what's going on. It's just we need to figure out what it is that we can do to help you. That's probably it. Hmm. Is there anything else I should know about? Was there anyone else in on these plans with you? Did anyone no, else, else know on these plans? No one in the world knew of this. Just your notebook. Just me. My notebook is underneath my bed. It's in a guitar case I keep locked. I have okay, so it's like pocket. underneath? It's underneath my bed in a guitar case. Where is the keys of the guitar case? I have the keys on me. Okay. If you want it. It's a red notebook written with the letter M. In it, it has not just my writings. It has things I print out from the internet. I have printed out um, how to synthesize methyl nitrate, acetone peroxide, um, I think I have one for Astrolite A and G, Chedite, RDX, um, various things like that. This key right here has the notebook. It's a red notebook. Okay. And it also has the instructions, ironically, used from the Boston Bombers from the Inspire magazine, how to cook, how to make a bomb in the kitchen of your mom. I printed that out. And I actually tried for a while making the circuit that they use with the clock. This was back in like uh, maybe October. This was a long time ago. I made. I bought a bunch of clocks, and I was attempting to make the circuits they did. But I made the circuits just fine. It's just I couldn't get the wires to stay on the hands because the hands were like really flimsy and plastic. So when I taped them, they wouldn't tick right, and they'd fall off, and they wouldn't complete the circuit by touching the nail protruding from the face. So then I decided I wanted to make another timer. So I tried. Um, trying to make a, a relay circuit with the switch and uh, some other crap in it with like some they use for like igniting model rockets. Then I decided to change my plan again. I decided I want to make walkie talkies and I have a soldering kit in one of the bins in my storage locker and I was going to solder the speaker wires from the walkie talkies to another walkie talkie that acts as the receiver and then when I hit the button to transmit a message on a certain channel that would send the frequency out and send. I would have the wires from the speaker connected to something I have in the storage locker called a squib, which is basically a Christmas light with the uh, the bulb taking off of it. And basically, when you light it up, it heats up and it would ignite like the gunpowder in this case, flash powder. Have you tried that? I've done it many times. They all worked. Um, I've never put. I've never had it in any device though. But I tried it once. I broke up a bunch of match heads, and this were like broken up like big chunks, not like a very fine powder, which is what the stuff I have in my locker is. I put it in there, I attached it to the wires and it lit up, so it works, obviously. But then I decided that I didn't want to risk like a cop or anyone's cell phones being on the same channel I was, so uh, eventually I bought a system off line that I was going to use that can transmit distance that couldn't really, was extremely hard to like um, interrupt the signal with just out of fear of someone interrupting it when I was trying to plant it, I get bacon bitted all over the hallway. Because that would be a mess that janitors have to clean up and no one wants that. Obviously you've done your research and on all of this stuff and put a lot of time in and reading and, and stuff. 
do you read most of this go on like is there like pages that you belong to or groups that you belong to or no I'm not part of any forums or groups or anything nope all I've really done to talk about this is I've asked certain people over YouTube hey man how do you blah blah blah, blah like uh uh, there was one video I was talking about flash powder. Flash powder. I was asking um, about like impact sensitivity or something like that, which is something you have to be really careful with. In fact, I was actually quite afraid to make the pressure cookers filled with that stuff because I was planning. I have. I don't know if you know what flash powder is, if you've ever heard of it. It is um, a pyrotechnic uh, chemical. It's much more powerful than uh, black powder, and it's a mix between. Um, I use 70% unit by weight compared to a which is preferred to be dark German by 30% unit by weight. And when you mix them together, finally they poof up and then they're still low, meaning they don't detonate, but they're still a lot tougher than what you'd see in the Boston bombs. They'd be like three times as bad, maybe, in power, about. So your goal was to make better ones than what the Boston guys did. I thought three casualties was pretty lame. I wanted like 15 done at the first bomb and maybe five, maybe five at the second. And the other, I was going to do my own. I was planning on putting eight pounds of it in each cooker, which is massive in comparison to one pound would um, send you to the moon. So eight pounds would like spread you from here to Owatonna basically and I was I have tw I have nine pounds of about nine pounds of in my locker and about 15 pounds of so that means I can make a total of 24 pounds of uh and I bite it up and assuming like I don't lose any of it along the process like make a mistake and lose it that'd be eight pounds in every cooker and four pounds in each pipe bomb but since um, known for being impact sensitive, I had to be careful making it. And in that large quantity, uh, the storage lock would probably have been in shambles if that had gone off. But luckily, I've made it many times in the past, and I've been very careful. I use nitro gloves and static spray and um, a lot of other safety equipment. I'm not just like some moron who just dumps them together and threads on the caps and blows himself up because he doesn't know what he's doing. I've been looking at this for almost a year. More than a year, actually. I've been reading up on this stuff like for hours and hours and hours. And, um... Like I said, you're you're very intelligent. You definitely know what you're talking about. I, and I, I'm not doubting yeah, anything so you're I really saying. Do. After school, I just look into stuff and try to... Do you look it on like closer. your computer at home and read through it all? And yep. Do you have like a laptop or a... Nope. Just regular house computer? Just regular house computer. <laughs> yep. And uh, my plans were, I was actually, I actually have three pipes in there. They're big. They're like... The ones that are left in your house that are put together? No, no, those are just little CO2 cartridges. What I have in my locker, I have three empty pipes. There's nothing in them, so when the you recover them... By the way, you don't really need to call a bomb squad in there, even though you probably want to take advice from me, because there are no live things in there. In the locker, there's nothing. There are no live. live ones in the locker at all. Okay. Um, I'll have this chemicals um, in... You saw those white things, right? Those, like, white things near the wall? Yep. In one of them, I had, like, 9 pounds of The other one, 15 pounds of and The other one, I had the 2 pounds of... Uh, not two pounds, one and a half pounds of smokeless powder. I usually had, I originally had two pounds, but those are what I made for CO2 bombs, and I put all the powder in those, so I lost them. And also you'll find in there just I didn't put that in there because it's insensitive. I didn't have to worry about temperature change setting it off like you would have even though that's unlikely, I didn't want to risk it. Um, so I was going to shoot the locks off, even though I really have no clue how to do that. I assume you just put the gun to like where the lock is and then blast that and then uh, light a pipe bomb and throw it in the room and bacon bits is what you get and that's what I plan on doing and after those were all used up I was gonna use the Molotov cocktails and like throw them at walls and then um, maybe kick in doors and blast people just like Siong who we showed it. He was a Virginia Tech guy by the way if you don't know. Okay. 
so that was the plan. Actually, I, something I forgot to leave out and mention, I was, okay, um, just so I don't miss anything. I was going to wake up, dispose of them, wait a while, I was going to actually take some gasoline and like light a f uh, field on fire, so it would be like a distraction for like the firemen or something, if it worked. And then I would drive to school, so there was like, they had to deal with two things at once and put them in the hallway, so it would be like um, two things I had to do at once, so they'd have to multitask and not as many come towards me. And then I'd go there and plant them and then carry on. Have you ever done anything to like animals or anything? Cats, dogs, pulling anything, animals up or anything? Um, there are these annoying dogs I really wanted to get rid of. I was thinking, be, I thought it'd be hilarious if um, something about me is I really hate annoying little dogs that always yap at the fence at you. So what I was thinking of doing is I was going to like take a piece of meat and like in the piece of meat I was going to hide a CO2 bomb and like toss it to the dog and as like the dog started to pick it up it like went off and took the dog's head off or something. That's what I was thinking of. But other than that, no, I haven't been like those Ukrainian dudes who were like torturing cats and dogs. I've never done that, anything like that. Okay. I don't know, I gotta ask, you know, I gotta try to... I don't like uh, torturing things. I like it to be over quick. Okay. I wanted to like it, I just didn't. Is there anything else I should know, John? Um, let me think. And no, I just basically should clarify that no one else knew about this. It was only me over the past year. Um, nope, that's it. Okay. That's the key, by the way. Okay. Where, and where is the uh, SKS in a case or anything? I have a... Like a safe or... I have a safe in my room, but I, it's not in the safe right now. I took it out because I was drunk. Just sit on your, is it just sit on your bed? Right, not the SKS. It's just laying on my bed. Okay. Which I know is illegal, by the way, to have that safe in my room. And beneath my bed, I forgot to add, I have... A loaded gun, which is a Beretta 92 FS, which is a nine millimeter. Where do you, Where did you get these guns from? Um, my dad. Okay. But he has no idea at all that that you have them I'm currently. Mentally ill, and he thinks I'm just a good kid because I can lie pretty well and persuade him that I'm just ordinary. Even though he almost caught me one time, I had to make up a huge lie, which I'm really glad he bought. Um, I like to go shooting and stuff, and he doesn't mind. And I have a locker in my room, but he doesn't condone me having like loaded magazines. But um, the thing was, I have a loaded. I have two magazines. Each one has ten rounds in it, and one is in the Beretta and chambered. But I have the safety on. And my plan was, if any time, if any time like they found out about it, I'd just like say, okay, We're just gonna screw do it, screw it, just do it right now and just take them out. But since it was you guys and I was unarmed, um, I couldn't really do anything except stab you if I want to, and that'd probably not do anything. Or I could try and take a Glock and see what that would do, but I probably wouldn't get far with that. Yeah, it wouldn't be too good of an idea, me being 280 pounds and you 130. So... I know you've been looking at it, so... Um, I actually wonder, is that a forty cal? That it is. I've never shot a forty cal. So, John, I'm going to step out and talk with uh, a couple people quick, make a phone call. Just hang tight, and I'll be back in, and we'll uh, see what's going to take place, okay? All right. Any questions? Well, actually, yes. Where am I going to stay overnight? I, don't obviously, know. I obviously know you guys can't like release me back. I, I I don't know that yet, John. I'll I'll tell you here in a little bit. Okay. Okay. During his trial, Ledoux was found guilty of multiple charges, including attempted murder, possession of explosives, and attempted criminal damage to property. He was sentenced to ten years in a juvenile facility, followed by ten years of supervised probation. In June 2016, Ledoux requested release from probation in exchange for accepting the felony 
and a 21-month jail sentence, which had already been covered by time served. He has been a free man since.